Hi folks, nice to see you back for another project. Let's say you are in a backyard. You're turning the soil upside down, water is flowing around you, phone is calling. What do you do? By the time you can answer the phone which is somewhere around you and you remove your gloves, you wash your hands and so on, the phone stops. Another example. You are in the shop. Wear the earmuffs. Phone is calling. You can't hear big deal. And more importantly, you have tools running. You cannot just leave the tools around. You have to stop the power. And by the time you do, then the phone stops. So, let's find out. One solution to this, it may not be the only one, but one solution to this. Let's see what happens when somebody is giving you a call. So soon, your phone is going to call. It's right here. For the moment you are in the backyard and you can't see the light because you work in the sunlight, then you have the sound alarm. When you're in the shop and you wear earmuffs, you can't hear any sound, then you have the light. And if this one is not big enough, it's just for a demo, you can put a much bigger one anytime, somewhere around your bench. Okay? So for this, we have a little project to do. Let's find out how do you get the diagram and some explanations about it. I'm going to use one which is easy to find. Let's say you type in your search provider mobile phone ring extender. Okay? Chances are the first link you get is going to be this one in radiohobby.org. You click on it and in a couple of seconds you are going to get the issue of the magazine. EPE stands for Everyday Practical Electronics. That's the magazine. And here, the page 20, you have the article. And uh, obviously, you are going to find the block diagram right here. And then, an electrical diagram, which is this one. And this, we're going to discuss because I have it ready for you right here. And we're going to talk a bit about this diagram. Okay then, so let's see how do we do with this diagram. Right here on the top left, there's the transducer. Remember the transducer is exactly the same we used before for another video with the uh, infrared uh, remote control. Is exactly this guy here. So what do we do? What do we do? The purpose is to put our phone on a lid, the lid of this box, okay, something like that. And the sensor should be able to catch the vibrations from the phone and to transfer them into the diagram, okay? So how the sensor is going to be capable to do that is because you're going to put it here with, with screws. But the problem is, the little trick, is that you need a kind of link between the metallic membrane of this transducer and the plastic uh, uh, cover, the plastic lid of the box. So you can use a little spring you can pick up from, let's say, uh, an old battery holder. But for me, I picked up such a little plastic spacer which I'm going to place right here. And in the moment I'm going to put it on the lid, the plastic spacer is going to touch mechanically both the lid and the transducer. This way the vibration is going to be transferred from the phone to the transducer. Okay? That's one thing to know. And then, if we go in the diagram, it's very well explained. This is half of the package uh, LM358, which is amplifying 
what's the signal, the little signal coming from the transducer. And of course, here you have the sensitivity because you can adjust the amplifying factor. But then you need to transfer this to a comparator and the comparator needs to compare the voltage coming here versus the reference. If the whole diagram was energized at nine volt, you are gonna measure here a bit less than one volt, 950 millivolts. As I change the power supply to 12 volt, it's gonna be somewhere probably around 1.15 volt. So here, these two diodes, they convert the AC signal coming here at the output of the first op amp into DC voltage. So this DC voltage is gonna be compared to that. So normally, when there is no signal from the transducer, you're gonna get here a very low voltage. How low? Probably very close to zero, okay? Very close to zero volt. But when the vibrations are transferred, the voltage here is gonna go high, close, close to the power supply. In my case, it's gonna be 12 volts, okay? 10, 12 volt. Then here, you have an integrator, and by playing with that potentiometer, it's very interesting. You are gonna make it in such a way that in the moment you just have a tap on the, on the lid or an accidental noise around, nothing is gonna be triggered. Only when the vibrations of the phone are coming, then they are gonna trigger the whole diagram. So this is the purpose of having that potentiometer right here. So next, you get a, a logic circuit, a CMOS uh, 4093, four NAND gates inside. But these last three ones, one, two, and three are used as inverters. And only this one is used as NAND, okay? So here we have another potentiometer to adjust your modulation. Here we're gonna get an LED to detect if you have a signal. And finally, right here, you get the, uh, let's say, uh, like the audio amplifier. But here is the point about it, because I'm going to mark exactly this point here on the wiper of the potentiometer, because you can have versions of this one. I'm gonna draw them right here, okay? So if I put this point from here, I move it here. We're gonna get something like this one transistor, but this time I'm gonna use it in a common emitter connection where this is a NPN and this is exactly that transistor here. I did not connect it like that. I connected it like that. This is my sound alarm. This is my 12 volt supply. So this is a version to connect instead of the one they considered because if you just put a piezo buzzer here, you won't hear much. So you need a powerful sound sometimes. Now, another version is here. You can have, and by the way, that's a one kilo ohm resistor here. So then you can have this one You can have your emitter to the ground, but then you can have the coil over relay. If it is the case, you're gonna put here a diode reverse way from the Sirius 1N 4000, okay? Anything from 4001 to 4007 to protect the transistor here when the relay shuts down. Here is the power supply voltage, okay? And here you have the contacts driven by the relay. So here you have the contacts. This is the common, this is the normally open, okay? And for my relay, I have two groups of contacts. I'm gonna draw both. This is the common, this is the normally open. 
So for one of them, very easy, you are going to put a resistor and a diode, an LED. Here this one goes to plus 12 volt. So when the contacts are closing, then you have the LED on. So you're going to see that the relay is energized. Here you can use same kind of NPN transistor like 2N2219 or BC, I don't know, 557, just to take a number, NPN2219 or BC557, okay? And related to that, something more interesting because I have two, pair, two pairs of contacts here, I can do something. I can trigger a uh, monostable circuit. So to have the light going for a number of seconds, if this is the line of the 12 volt, I'm gonna have here the pin eight, the pin four, this is the VCC. The pin four is the reset. Then we're gonna get here the pins six and seven. And then we have here a capacitor. This is a resistor, this is the capacitor. These are the ones counting for the duration. We're gonna see about them. Here is the pin five, just decoupled by 10 nanofarad, we don't need to use it. This is the pin one, which is the ground. This is the voltage control, we don't use it. Here is the trigger, the pin number two, trigger. And here is gonna be a 0 0.1 microfarad coming from these two contacts. You have here two resistors, one here and one here. Both of them are 100 kilohms. Okay, and this one goes to the ground. So in the moment the contacts are closing, the circuit is gonna be triggered. We just need here an output. This is the one kilohm and the same kind of transistor NPN, but because this one is going to trigger the light, I'm gonna put here the light. Depending on the light, if it is too strong, this is 12 volts plus 12 volt. You may need here a more powerful transistor. Let's say I'm gonna use a Texas instrument power transistor, TAP31 is gonna do the job. It doesn't even need a heatsink, but is a bit stronger than the other kind of transistors, okay? So here, the duration is calculated using a simple formula, 1.1 times the resistor times the capacitor, the resistor being this one between pin six, seven and the positive and the capacitor is the one going to the ground. If you put here, around 560 kilo ohms, and here 10 microfarads. The duration is gonna be 1.1 times 0 0.56 times 10 of the six in mega ohms, and 10 microfarads is 10 times 10 of the negative six. These ones, they go out. I just don't want to use the pocket calculator. Time is 1.1 times 5.6, because 0 0.56 times 10 is 5.6, so it's approximately six seconds, okay? 6.15, 6.16, okay? About six seconds. So this one is gonna work for six seconds, so this is gonna be the duration the light goes on. But if the phone is ringing for a longer time, it's gonna be re-triggered again, okay? Anyway, that's the purpose of it. A monostable circuit, you don't need to use them. If you want to keep the diagram simple, you just use the original one. Here is a version of the original one for the last transistor. Here is another version, and if you use this one, you can use a relay. And if you do, I just want to emphasize the relay is the one containing the coil and the contacts together, two groups of contacts. One of them is going to have just a LED, okay? 
and the other contact is going to just trigger a monostable circuit. Do not forget, it is the famous 555 here, the package, okay? So now let's see, with the diagram, just a couple of adjustments you should do, okay? In the moment, I adjusted the potentiometer, the potentiometer being exactly this one here, of 100 kiloamps. Remember from another video using the RJ12 connector, that's exactly what I'm doing and using that potentiometer here. By adjusting it, the purpose is when you tap with the fingers here, nothing is going to happen, okay? It's only when uh, the phone is ringing. But of course, you can't keep ringing the phone when you try to do all these adjustments. A very good trick is, I have an older tool here, everybody knows what it is, okay? It's a toothbrush. So in the moment you just put it here, it vibrates. It has very strong vibrations. You see this? It's triggering everything exactly like the phone. So you leave it working here on the sensor and that's how you can make all the adjustments you want. And by the way, what you are going to see, this is why I stopped it. Let me just disconnect for a moment the sound because it's too loud, okay? In the moment, this one is going to start working. Two things. Here, for that potentiometer, you see here the voltage. You see here the voltage is not far from 12 volts, it's 10.5. Why is this? Because when there are no vibrations, the voltage is very close to zero. Okay, at the same time, at the same time, when you measure, when you measure the vibrations, that's how you can see them here. And if I remove it, after a while, you're going to see what happens. You won't take long. You see this? No more vibrations, okay? So that's how you can watch exactly what happens, uh, exactly where I connected my probe is here on the pin three of the uh, uh, 4093, uh, the output before the transistor, because it can be this one, it can be that one, it can be that one, okay? But right here at the output, I'm monitoring what happens. And for me, the best tool is this one. You see right away, when I start working, vibrations are appearing, okay? When vibrations are disappearing, I have here the LEDs. This is the output three. This is the one with the, the relay contacts, monitoring if the relay is working, okay? Exactly like on the diagram, okay? See? So I'm gonna put this one uh, in the comments of the video. Don't worry about this. You're gonna find the, the file. And uh, you know now how to get the whole diagram and the description of it. So the job is done. Now, thank you very much for watching. See you next time for another video, okay? On my way out, I'm going to give you one last call.